Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to our brand new tutorial series in MongoDB and Node.js. In this tutorial series, we will go through how you can set up MongoDB in MongoDB Atlas, how you can connect it with your Node.js application, and then we will go through MongoDB functionalities like fetching documents, updating existing documents, creating new documents, deleting them, and a lot more. So if you are interested in that, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future episodes. So yeah, with that said, let's get into today's video, which is creating an account on MongoDB, creating our first database, and then connecting it with our Node.js application. So first of all, go ahead and click the link down in the description, which will redirect you to the sign up page for MongoDB Atlas. And all you have to do really is sign up. So let's put our first name, which is Mike, then our last name, then your company, this is optional. So if you want, you can leave it out. So if you want, you can leave it empty. Then we will put our email address and then we will create a password with eight characters minimum. Then I'll say I agree to the terms of service and privacy policy and we'll create an account. And it's that simple. Now all we have to do is go to our email and verify it. And as you see, my email is successfully verified. So what I'll do is click continue. Now we have to fill up a form. So let's go ahead and do that. So what is your goal today? Explore what I can build or actually what we'll do learn MongoDB. Then what type of application are you building? So let's say, and let's do personalization. Actually, I'm not sure what we actually building because we are not actually building anything. And what is your preferred language? I guess you can do whatever you want here. It doesn't really matter. What is your preferred language? Okay, let's do JavaScript. And then let's click finish. Now on your preferred language, you might want to select your preferred language because it might give you some code you might want to copy or something like that. So make sure it, it is on JavaScript in our case. And let's click finish. And there we go. So right here is where we will create our database. And as you see, and as you see MongoDB has a free option, which is the third one. So yeah, let's click create select our cloud provider and the region. Now MongoDB Atlas is partnering with these companies. So it gives us these options right here. I'll do AWS and let's click Frankfurt. This is closest to my location. That's why I do that. So go ahead and do that as well. And if you are using in, if you are planning on building a production application, then put this MongoDB Atlas closest either to your server, which you have hosted your website, because basically the website will fetch those data. So you want it to be closest to that or closest to you if you are using it personally. Then I guess this is it. We don't have to select anything else. Now you can go for the paid ones, but this is our tutorial and most of you just want a free server, a free database, which you can play with. And there we go. Now you don't have any backup because you are not in a paid plan. And let's put a cluster name. Let's do YouTube tutorial. Okay, there we go. And create cluster. Okay, I'll, I'll click skip. Okay, so next we will do how would you like to authenticate your connection? And we, we can skip that. Actually, can we? Okay, we cannot. Or yes, we can. So let's just click out. Let's click up here. I want to skip that because it doesn't allow me to use some custom settings. And as you see, the cluster is being created. New clusters takes between one to three minutes to provision. So let's wait those five minutes and I'll be back. And there we go. Our database is created. So what I will do is, is go to network access and give it and allow access to anyone. Why you want to do that is because your IP changes frequently or your or the IP of your website, for example, if you want to connect it with a website, again, changes frequently. So if I put a specific address, we, we will have some issues, but you can do that. So you can either enter an IP address or click up here and add current IP address, which it will add your IP address. And I guess if you are working on a personal project, I guess that's okay. And if for some reason, someday it stops connecting to your database, just go ahead and update your current IP address. But for now I'll do allow access from anywhere and click confirm. 
you can also add temporary access to some IP address as you saw right here or annex hours so yeah now all of those things are not important right now now we will go to database access and create a user basically on node.js you will have to add a user and a password in order to connect to the database it's actually a url containing those two information which i'll show you in a bit so let's click add new database user and we will give it some access so first of all let's create the user and let's put root or you can put whatever you want doesn't really matter and let's click auto generate secure password I like that but you can put your own password as well but it's more secure that way and make sure you copy it because it will not show you it will not show you it again you have to create a new user and again you have to copy it and that's it now we don't have to change anything here leave it as it is and that's it so let's click so let's click add user and there we go our user is also created now we will not load any sample data so let's go ahead and connect to your cluster so right now it's deploying the changes we did so we created a user and we created we connected some ip address so now to connect to your database through the node.js app all you have to do is click connect click connect your application now it will let it will show you the driver which is auto selected on node.js because if you remember before we clicked as our preferred language javascript and it knows that you are probably using node.js and not python for example and now let's copy our connection string actually first of all make sure you save somewhere your password and i'll do that in a notepad and let's copy our url now let's go ahead and create our node.js application so first of all go ahead and create a new folder and up here we will type cmd if you are windows so we can open the terminal into this folder and what we will do is npm init-y so we can create a package.json and then all we have to do is install mongo so we'll do npmi mongoose which is basically mongodb for node.js this is the package name and then we'll do that to save and we will open this on visual studio code and create a new folder called index.js now what we will do is const mongoose so we'll basically import mongoose like that and we will connect to the database so we'll do mongoose.connect and here we will pass the url so let's go back click connect click connect to your application copy the mongo uri paste it then what we will do is replace this field right here with our actual password and here in my first database let's change the name to youtube because whenever we run this it will create a database automatically with the name we give it unless you have one already with that name so let's do that and then let's open terminal new terminal and run node index actually before we do that let's put a dot then and we want whenever this actually runs successfully to console the log a message so we'll do console the log connected to mongodb and then we'll do a catch so in case it fails that's what catch means we will get the error and then we will console it so console the log error and there we go so let's run the app and it says connected to mongodb so that's basically it now if we go back to our database click close click browse collections and we go to our collections now for some reason I currently have an issue and it's not retrieving the list of databases and collections if you have that as well let me know down in the comments but that's probably temporarily and you can try waiting but it doesn't seem to fix the issue by waiting so probably try later or something like that so yeah that's basically it. let me know down in the comments what we'd like to see next and also in the next episode what we will do is create schemas so schemas is basically define which values we will use in our collection so yeah i will go through the collection the schemas and everything around that in the next episode so yeah hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss any of my future episodes